This video is going to take a look at the weaknesses in pixel responsiveness of the AOC Q3279VWF. This video is specifically looking at the weaknesses. Um, you know there are plenty of pixel transitions on this monitor which performed pretty quickly and this is all explored in the review. This is just to give a sort of graphical assessment of some of these weaknesses which I discuss in the review. Um, it's using one of my favourite scenes on Battlefield 1 for highlighting some of these weaknesses. There are plenty of high contrast transitions which VA models such as this are notoriously slow at. Um, with this model you can see a bit of sort of smearing trailing on the horse um, kind of especially with the um, darker shadowed satchel and the darkest elements on the horse you can see that kind of smeary trailing there you can also see it um, on this sort of light icon there with the darker background as well a bit more noticeable when it's uh, got the mountain um, or the cliffs in the background there in terms of the pixel responsiveness it's not the worst VA model I've seen um, the Philips BDM4037 um, which I reviewed not too long ago that is one of the most uh, sort of shockingly unresponsive VA models I've used recently um, I mean there's plenty of older models I've used you know the, the BenQ EW2420 and that kind of uh, model a long long time ago they were really very slow as well um, and there's some old Samsung VAs I used a while ago they're slower than this but this model is a little bit slower in terms of pixel responsiveness compared to some of the recent um, Samsung curved VA models and also the um, AU Optronics AMVA Plus models. Um, it's, I mean, it's something that not everyone is as bothered by as other people, um, but there are some people who really dislike this kind of trailing. Um, when it comes to VA models. I'm just going to take out these enemies and show you some of the more obvious examples of this sort of smearing trailing or smeary trailing. You can see nice high contrast transitions there with the spade and sort of some smeary trailing there. And as I've mentioned it's a bit slower um, than some recent VA models I've used um, sort of the Ultra Wides and the AOC AG322QCX, which use Samsung curved SVA panels. Um, they're a little bit more polished in terms of the pixel responsiveness. They've still got weaknesses, and I talk about them in my reviews. Um, but the, the, the sort of the smeary trailing isn't as widespread or as obvious as it is on this model. Um, I mean, it's obvious to me, and it will be to some users, but other people they could quite happily play games like this and not really be bothered by it. So. Um, it's just one of those things that bothers some people, it doesn't bother other people. I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper into this map to show you a few other things. And actually there's quite a nice example of the sort of smeary trailing um, at the top of the telegraph post there. A very, um, a very slow pixel transition there. There's what I would call breakup trailing, but it's actually almost has a kind of smoke-like appearance to it, which is uh, indicative of a very slow pixel response for that particular transition. Um, I'm not sure how well it'll turn out in the video, but you'll kind of see a, a bit of a purple trail there, smoke-like appearance to that. There's also overshoot on this model um, where there are lighter transitions. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find any of them um, on this particular map. I might um, do a little quick section after this with some, some of those transitions just to highlight some of the overshoot. Um, but I mean, it isn't just at night that you see these dark transitions. Um, sort of, if you're playing um, a game like Battlefield 1, it doesn't have to be Battlefield 1, any game really, there was often intricate mixtures of, of light and dark, for example, in building interiors or shaded areas. Um, so it's not just at night you'll see these. And on some titles, they're really quite widespread. Um, Battlefield one is sort of it's a fair mixture but you know there's some games where it will be predominantly dark or there'll be lots of these high contrast transitions 
Um, but this is just to highlight some weaknesses. Again, not everyone will be bothered by these. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory as long as it sort of comes out in the video properly. You can also see there there's a kind of purple effect. That's again a bit of breakup trailing, possibly a little bit of overshoot in there as well. Um, and this is again something that some people will notice and other people um, won't notice or won't be so bothered by. As promised, I'm going to show more of a sort of mixed um, scenario with plenty of lighter pixel transitions, lots of lighter shades as well. Now, I'm actually using the weak response time setting on the monitor, um, the weak overdrive setting. That's because I found it optimal. It's something I've tested extensively um, with subjective testing, but also uh, sort of more focused testing, such as test UFO. I mean, I've, I've looked at all sorts of different transitions, massive range, um, and I've come to the conclusion that weak is basically optimal for this monitor. You can see a bit of overshoot. I'm not sure how clear it'll be on the video. Um, at the border between this sort of lightly painted house and the bright background there, the sky. But it's not too obvious. Um, I mean, it's not particularly bright. It's just a kind of slight bright fringe, which is brighter than either, either the background or foreground colour, um, the object or the background colour. You can also see some of these darker transitions. So again, as I was saying, that there are often scenes where there's a mixture of transitions. Um, you can see some of the kind of smeary trailing around the windows there. And I'm just going to show you what happens if you increase the um, pixel overdrive setting. So I'm completely pressing the wrong buttons on the monitor. It's very difficult to use in the dark, the uh, OSD on this model. So, as I said, I've got it on weak for the overdrive. If I put that up to medium, you might be able to see on the video, but to my eye it's quite clear that that overshoot is a lot stronger there, yet you still get plenty of, um, you get plenty of sort of smeary trailing on the windows. It doesn't, essentially it doesn't really help with the slower pixel transition, it just gives you more overshoot, and that's explored more in the written review. Now, if I use the strong setting, as I know some people would just love to see a demonstration of this, um, basically the screen just goes overshoot crazy. You can see overshoot all around the air window now. Overshoot there, I mean, there are all sorts of different odd bright colours. You can see some pinks there as well. Um, it's basically a massive mess. Um, and even with this, there's actually some sort of smeary trailing mixed in as well. Um, but it's really quite ghastly. Um, so I wouldn't recommend the strong setting at all. And I'd just like to reiterate that really this video was to highlight some of the specific weaknesses there are with pixel responsiveness and give me a kind of aid in my review to help my written explanations. Um, again, it's not something everyone will notice or be bothered by necessarily, and there's plenty of sort of positive attributes to this monitor. So. I don't really want anyone to be unnecessarily put off this um, unless they sort of they've seen similar models or they know that they're going to be really bothered by this kind of thing because not everyone is and there is plenty to like about this monitor especially given the uh, the price at the moment.